I'm going to show you how to build a window frame, put some glass in it, tint that glass, have that glass shadow show that tint, then replace the glass with stained glass. To follow along, go to Working Files, go to Photoshop Projects, and open up Window Frame down here. If you looked at the ground plane lesson a couple chapters back, then you've seen this window frame. We're going to build this from scratch. Go to File, New, take this one here, click OK. Let's build the frame. First order of business is to get the shape tool here. Let's choose a rectangle. I don't want to fill, but I do want a stroke. Let's make the stroke about 20 or so. And white is a good thing to work with, but we can take any color, but white's helpful. I'm going to go up here to the corner, as close as I can get. Click down like that. And there's our frame. So now I want to add some crossbars. So I'm going to get the pencil tool here just for some variety. Got the pencil tool. I want to make it about equal to 20. You're going to find out that 20 here is not sufficient. We'll go to maybe 30 or something like that. See how that looks? I need to rasterize this. I'm going to click here, hold on the shift key as I drag to make that line straight. And I'm thinking that's not quite large enough. I'll do that. Change this to, let's say, 50 or thereabouts. Right in the middle again. Hold on the shift key as I draw this. Keep it straight. That works. Go over here to the same thing. Click. Go across. Keep it straight. And there's our window frame. Let's extrude this. So we've got the 3D panel up in here, 3D extrusion. Create. And you can see it's a very deep window frame, way too deep for our purposes. So select the rectangle there. Lock it down to something like 050 or so. Right around there. Now let's give it a bevel. We'll go to the cap section here where the bevels are. Give it a width first. Drag it out a bit. There's our bevel. That looks pretty good. Let's give it a little bit of a contour. It's window. It can't be too complicated, but something like that gives it kind of an edge. I like that. Maybe you can change the width a little bit here. Something like that. Okay. Let's give this some texture and color. So go to the front inflation. Also, I want to go to the back inflation and go to the extrusion as well. We'll give all these guys the same thing. I'm going to go down here. And I want to load up some wood textures here. So I go there, and wood textures are some of the ones that you can get from Adobe down there. I'll append it. A couple of wood ones down here. I like the red wood here. Click on that. I can leave these guys white like this, or I can give them color as well. But I think you see how this works, so we'll move on from there. Now I want to put some glass in there. So I'm going to create a new layer. And we'll fill it with white. Edit fill. And we'll go to white. And I'm going to create a postcard out of this. A postcard is a little bit easier to work with here in this case because there aren't a whole lot of meshes to deal with. Just one. Click on Postcard. Say Create. And now it's a 3D postcard. I want to merge these two together. Before I do, I'm going to give them a name. I'm going to call this one Glass. And I'll call this one Frame. And now let's merge them. I'll select the top one there and merge it down. Get to the Panel menu. Merge down. All right, now I want to deal with the glass. I want to give the glass kind of a tint and make it somewhat transparent and also reflective because I want light to bounce off it. So go select the glass layer, go down to the layer mesh there. Let's give it a color. Right now it has a texture file. We need to remove that so we can just use this swatch to give it a color. So I'm going to remove that texture. Click on this to give it a nice color, like red, for example. It's a little extreme, right? But we'll take care of that in a second. Maybe not pure red. All right, let's reduce its opacity quite a bit. Maybe 50% right on there, 40%. And nothing's happening yet. Why is that? Because Opacity has a texture file as well. Go there and remove that one as well. And now we're talking. We can make it reflective, about 50%. And now I think we're ready to go. What I want to do now is create a ground plane. So I'm going to close this down so I can see things better. Add a new layer. You can bring it above or below, it doesn't make a difference. We'll fill it with gray this time. So go Edit, Fill. And we'll choose gray, 50% gray there. All right. I want to make that a postcard as well. So I click Create. I'm going to change the name to Ground Plane. And then we'll merge that one down. There we go. So now we have three different meshes here inside this single layer. I want to take the Ground Plane and make it kind of flat and put it down at the bottom and also shrink down the size of the window. So I need to click the Frame layer, click the Glass layer with the Controller Command. So I have both of them selected. Go over here to the Scale Uniformly. And pull this one toward me a bit so I can see that ground plane. Click on the ground plane now. I can just rotate that manually. Tip it like so, perhaps. Pull it down a bit like so. 
doesn't have to be exact, but I don't want to go below the ground plane, so we'll put it right there, meaning the default ground plane. Now let's position the window frame and the glass on this. We select both of them, one, control click or command click the other one. We can take the rotate tool here and turn it around like that a little bit. There you go, just kind of position it where we want. See how we can kind of manipulate this guy to get right more or less in place there. All right, I want to change the light from infinite to point because point is a little more dramatic. Click on infinite, change it to point. There we go. Now I want to position it. I can see it there. It's pretty easy to track down. But I'm going to take the top view here. Now this thing is pointing down. That means it's top. So I just swap the views. There we are. Need to pull it off to the side a little bit. So I've got this tool to do that, the drag tool, and pull this off to the side like that. Now you can see the shadow flying back there. Looks pretty good. I might want to lift it up a bit here. So I'm going to switch views back like this. And then I'm going to go to the side view. Change this to the side. Could be right, left, doesn't make a difference. Swap the view. Let's lift it up a little bit. Let's swap our way back here. And now you can see how the light is falling through there from that point light. Let's run to this to see what's going on. Come back here and select that area and run to that. Take a look. And that is great how it throws light. If this were the default ground plane, you wouldn't see that coming through this window like that. Now we made this reflective, so let's see what's going on in front as well. So I'll select the front here like that. And we'll try that again. Ah, light is being thrown here off the window into the front. Just a little scattered pink there. Now what I want to do is I want to put a different kind of a texture here in the window to give it a stained glass look. So I go back to the glass layer, select that mesh there, go to its diffuse here. I want to load a texture. We're going to go to the photo spin images and load up lightgraphics.jpg. That'll make an immediate difference there. Look how it shows up there in the window. Very nice. Let's go back here and do a little bit of work on that one. And see how the render looks there. It'll be subtle, but you'll be able to see that the stained glass is illuminating the floor. Is that not cool? So there you go. That's how you create a window frame from scratch, add tinted glass to it, and have the shadow being thrown by the glass have some color in it.